We begin this broadcast with some breaking news coming in from Israel. According to the Israeli media, the war cabinet has decided to hit back forcefully against Iran for its missile and drone attack on Saturday night. The head of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps had warned that Iran would respond to future Israeli attacks on Iran-linked targets. Israel is also facing growing pressure from allies to show some restraint and avoid an escalation of conflict in West Asia. The Biden administration has been the most vocal in asking Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to exercise restraint. Britain has also asked the Prime Minister to exercise some sort of restraint because they do not want this war to escalate. America says that they do not want this war to escalate in West Asia. Let's speak to our correspondent, Susan Tehran, who's joining us on the, li on the line from New York. Susan, good to see you again. Have you had anything from American officials regarding this latest statement from Israel? Well, we did hear a little bit earlier as this war cabinet meeting started from U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, uh, once again saying that the America really will back Israel in any of its endeavors. Uh, we're trying to figure out if this is in contradiction to what President Biden had said, because it has been reported that President Biden, as early as Saturday on that phone call with Prime Minister Netanyahu, had told uh, the Israeli Prime Minister that the U.S. wouldn't be involved should Israel want to uh, carry out that counterattack. Anthony Blinken now says that uh, America's support is ironclad, and we're hearing that President Biden is saying the same as well. Uh, Blinken also said that for the past 36 hours or so, they've been in constant contact with Israeli officials trying to find a diplomatic solution to the ongoing impasse. We don't know exactly what that means, uh, but we're also hearing that at this moment, uh, President Biden is meeting with uh, the Iraqi prime minister. And of course, they'll be discussing events in the Middle East as well. One of the issues I want to say, which is very important in this equation, the reason I bring up Iraq is uh, it's not clear whether or not Iranian missiles were launched from Iraqi soil into Israel as well on Saturday, or they just flew over Iraqi airspace into Israel. Um, if it was indeed from Iraqi soil, then uh, I think, you know, that'll be another thing that we'll be hearing from U.S. and Israeli officials on uh, what their next moves would be. And the U.S. would definitely make a comment regarding that as well. Susan, uh, we are reporting that uh, the Israeli defense minister, Yoav Gallant, did speak to the U.S. defense secretary, Lloyd Austin, and did point out that uh, Israel is willing to retaliate. Do we expect any uh, sort of information from Pentagon? Like I said, the messaging has sort of had an ebb and flow since Saturday. Right now, the it seems the consensus in the Biden administration is when Israel, Israel does retaliate, which Israel will because its red line prior to Iran's attack was uh, whether this attack would be carried out from Iranian soil. So they're saying at this point, un in unison at least, that should Israel launch this counterattack, it should be restrained and not uh, you know, as extensive where it would bring the Middle East into a wider conflict. But you know, with everything that's going on, I don't know if that's easier said than done. All right, I'll be talking to our correspondent, Susan Tehrani, live in New York. Thank you, Susan. If you're just joining us, this is news just in from Israel. According to the Israeli media, the war cabinet has decided to hit back forcefully against Iran for its missile and drone attack on Saturday night. The head of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps had warned that Iran would respond to future Israeli attacks on Iran-linked targets. For all the latest news, download the Wii on app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.